All right, so it is Fourth of July weekend. It's time for a long overdue walkthrough of my low 1860 side console. It's a 2019 model. Got it a couple of years ago from Everland Folks and Motors there in Herman, Missouri. Uh, they've done a good job of updating it for me. I'll give you a quick walkthrough of it to talk about some of the features that we've added and, and what I like most about it. Start with, um, as you can see, it is the uh, camouflage model. Uh, just do a quick walk around. It's low 1860 Roughneck side console with the Mercury four stroke on the back. And it's a 2020 model and I'll, I'll explain why the motor's a 2020 and the boat's a 2019 here in a little bit. Uh, but just doing kind of a real quick walk around, show you what, uh, what the boat looks like overall, but really, really happy with it. Kind of explain what it is and what it is not. Um, and what I mean by that is to, uh, what it is, is a, an aluminum John boat. Um, it's not meant to be a $90,000 fiberglass bass boat. It doesn't have the same features or the same price point. But for an aluminum John boat, it does a phenomenal job, and you can fish tournaments out of it. So for anybody out there thinking about, man, I don't have the equipment to compete with the big boys and girls in the, the bigger tournaments, I'm here to tell you that uh, don't let that stop you. You know, this is an 18-foot aluminum boat that I've put a lot of work into, made a lot of modifications to, and... Uh, well, I don't have quite the range as a bigger boat does, uh, and it doesn't take the rough water near as good. It still works for fishing tournaments if you want to do that out of your aluminum boat, so don't let that hold you back. Uh, as far as some of the features that we've added, let's start at the front and work our way back. First thing you'll see is the, uh, the Minn Kota Ultrax. Uh, man, I love that trolling motor. Absolutely will never have another boat without... Um, this feature it's got the spot lock you know most of the newer trolling motors have some type of uh, anchor feature or something like that but this one is an 80 pound thrust 24 volt Ultrax which is plenty of, of motor for this 18 foot boat although that being said um, there's times when I'm fishing heavy river current on the Gasconade of the Osage where it's not enough I wish I'd had a little bit more trolling motors so Definitely don't shortchange yourself if you're looking at a boat for the rivers when you're fighting that current. So the Ultrex does a, a great job. I love, love, love the spot lock feature. Man, I use it all the time. Um, can't say enough good things about it. As far as electronics goes, um, I've got, I don't have them out there, but up front there's for, I've got two Garmin 94 SVs. Um, one for the bow and another one back here. For the steering console they're just twin 94 svs i do have the panoptics live scope uh, you can see the transducer mounted here you know it, it's not the magic fish catching thing that people think it is and maybe for crappie and stuff but it's i can think the one time it's really helped me uh, and it wasn't so much seeing a fish and catching the fish but what it did help me with when i fished grand lake earlier in March and I won that tournament. That decision I made up at Grand Lake to leave that pull or that timber flat where I had caught one and make another run back up to a creek up there in that uh, shallower water, I made that decision because I found fish on the Garmin live scope that uh, Friday afternoon of practice. I couldn't catch them then, but I knew there was a couple of bigger ones there in the middle of that creek channel. And so, if you will, it kind of paid for itself when I went back up there. I caught that five and a half in the last 20 minutes of the day. Probably one of those fish that I saw on the live scope a couple days earlier. So, you know, my decision to go back up there was based in part of what I saw on the live scope. So, that in and of itself probably, probably helped pay for itself right there and went in that tournament based on that five and a half pound kicker I got at the very end. But... One of my goals this summer is to learn how to use that device a little bit more. Um, I just haven't been able to spend a lot of time with it and learning to use it as much as its potential uh, allows for. So, But uh, certainly love the Garmin unit, the 94SVs, um, the side view, the bottom view, and the panoptics all together are great features. You just got to spend time learning how to use them. The boat itself, the trailer comes with a swing away tongue. Um, I don't need it for my particular garage. It's big enough where I don't have to use that, but certainly is a nice feature if you do have a shorter garage. It's got a high quality roller here that works real well and the winch have no issues there. You can see the front it's kind of a semi-V on the front and it, it 
graduates to a basically a flat bottom there in the back and again it's designed for running in skinny water and i'll talk about the jet here in, in just a little bit that i've got on here but it, when i'm up on plane i can run in about three inches of water with this boat uh, and that jet motor on the back uh let's see the butt seat up front um I like it just to help uh, keep my balance uh, in rough water, and uh, I'm just used to it. It doesn't bother me at all. I use it quite a bit. Storage. Um, I'll climb up here in a minute and talk about storage. But first things first, you can see this sea decking that I've got installed. This is four sheets of sea deck, and I tried to match the color to kind of match the, uh, the lighter beige or the camouflage pattern. It's fairly close, but not quite, but it's good enough. It's a lighter color. I can get up here in the summertime and fish barefoot in 95, 100 degree temps and, and not bother me at all. So it does a great job of quieting the boat. It does a great job of keeping it cooler uh, to where I can fish out in the summertime and, uh, and still enjoy ourselves. Let's go to the back, in case I haven't covered yet, the Mercury four-stroke. You heard me mention the boat's a 2019. The motor is a 2020. And the reason I've got a 2020 motor on here and not a 2019, because I had a 2019 90 65 jet 90 horse the power head 65 at the jet that got me a top speed of about 29 mile an hour uh, which is okay but uh it just really wasn't enough when i get me and, and katie and the boys and and all our gear in there it, it gets it up on plane but it's got to work fairly hard um and it just i was hoping for something just a little bit more uh, oomph to it so what I had them do a year later is put this, um, it's a 115.80 on the back, which is the biggest jet that this thing can is rated for. And this will get me top speed with me, one person in my gear, 35 mile an hour. It doesn't sound like much, but that extra six mile an hour really comes in handy. It just a little bit, gives me a little bit of uh, cruising speed at 29, 30 mile an hour is kind of what I cruise at for the most part. But if I need that little bit extra, I've got it with this setup and I really like it. For folks that aren't familiar with a jet boat, um, I got to learn on these jets when I worked for the department here 25 years ago when I started my first assignment in Ripley County on the current river. I had a jet boat down there and absolutely loved it. For these Ozark streams and chasing smallmouth and skinny water, it's, it's, you can't beat them. So these jets have uh, an intake down here at the bottom. They call it a boot with an impeller up in there that you can see that sucks water up through the bottom and shoots it out back here so it sucks water in here and propels it out the back and that's what pushes you forward um, you see a lot of guys when they use these jets you carry an extra screwdriver with it because occasionally you'll suck rocks up into the gate grates here and you'll have to pry them out with a uh, screwdriver if you get a little too shallow but with this you know with this boot on this jet motor it sits just slightly below the back of the boat here and when i'm up on plane i can run in about three inches of water uh, up on plane across that skinny water with no problems at all absolutely love it the other thing i like about this is i can also fish it on the bigger water uh, i can fish it on lake of the ozark stockton truman as long as the wind doesn't get too ridiculously bad um, I even had it on Mille Lacs. Family and I went up to Lake Mille Lacs and kind of stayed by ourselves and did a little fishing for smallies on Mille Lacs. And the wind wasn't bad, and this boat worked just fine on, on a big open lake like Lake Mille Lacs up in Minnesota. So the only time I had any kind of trouble with it at all was Thursday at Truman before that last tournament when those storms came in with about a 30-mile-an-hour wind gust that were blowing down that main channel. Um, where dad and I were fishing and it got pretty rough getting back. We were just kind of constantly getting hammered uh, trying to get back in that three foot rollers. It didn't work good then. And so that's why I used his boat. Um, but when the winds at a, at a modest chop or fairly calm, it does great. I absolutely love it. The back here has got storage for my three batteries, my two trolling motor batteries and my, uh, my starting battery. I've got my push pole and a paddle. One the same back here. I've also got um, an onboard Minn Kota three bank charger with the plug in right here where I just back it into the, the driveway and plug it in in my basement garage when I'm ready to charge it up and, and uh, charge it overnight it's good to go so it doesn't have a lot of storage back here but it's enough to get me by I put my landing net back over here when I don't need it as well again with a C deck keep your scraps 
because I use them to help quiet the boat down. So I don't have aluminum banging against aluminum. I use the scraps like right there and on that side. Again, a lot quieter with that than it is metal clanging and banging on metal when you're trying to fish. Especially when you're fishing skinny water and, and you don't want to be too loud and spook the fish. The transducer for the console Garmin 94SB sits back here. Um, it, it does, you know, you hit shallow, you got to kind of watch it. it. It does flex a little bit, which is nice, but um, every once in a while you got to tighten these screws up here. But um, it works pretty slick for when I'm graphing fish uh, or using the, uh, the side view back here. This is the transducer that hooks up to the, the console Garmin 94SV here. This here in the back is where I've got uh, where I would put the generator for when I have the gigging rails up I need to power the lights to go gigging out of this. The generator sits back here in this little section and I got some straps that I can mount the generator back here um, and then just basically plug the lights in to the generator that's on the gigging rail up front which is I've got that in the barn right now. But uh, absolutely love the sea decking, four sheets of it. And if you decide to go that route for your aluminum boat, um, keep the scraps because I use the scraps all the time, as you can see, uh, to quiet down some different accessories. So this little extra storage box here, um, you can see there, I've got the extra pieces on here to make sure I don't burn my forearms when I'm driving or anything on the hot aluminum. This is where I keep my wallet, my keys, my phones. Um, and again, not waterproof. So I put them in a plastic bag while I've got it in there, but that's really a handy storage compartment right there that Eberlin's builds those themselves. And that's where I got them from there. Drink holder right here that works really slick. And again, just extra extra padding right here to, to quiet it down and make sure I don't burn my arms or anything. You can see from the steering console up top there, I've got an extra piece right there. When I do my, my self-filming, describing the tournaments coming up here in the mornings before takeoff here, I just mount my cell phone on this ram mount here. Just mount my phone like so right there. Um, and that way I can do my narratives coming up, um, talking about the takeoff or midday updates and that sort of thing. It works pretty handy to keep my phone handy as well. In case I get a call or something, I can kind of have some hands-free access to it by just accessing the deal right there so that's the other garmin mount for the console here again on another really sturdy ram mount it's not going anywhere um, again pop that deal off and then pop the garmin 94 sv in there and take it in and out when i need it um, the steering package itself it's certainly not uh, you know the most aerodynamic by any means again this is a john boat it's not a ninety thousand dollar bass boat yes, now's a good time talking about it the live well as much as anything when this boat is originally coming from the manufacturer all you're going to get is this aerator down here um, that you can cycle you know full time or cycle it on on auto um, and that pumps fresh water in through the intake up to the live well but that's all it comes with and so uh, learning the lesson the hard way that's fine in the colder weather months of the year but when that temperature of the water warms up a little bit it's not enough so don't make the same mistake I did there. So I had Eberlin's install this recirculation pump as well and timer up here. And this button right here is for the oxygenator. And I'll hop up here in a minute and I'll show you the, both of those in the live well itself. But between the, uh, the aerator pump, the recirculation, the timer, and the oxygenator, I'm in a much better place to keep fish alive for fishing tournaments than I would be without it. But again, these are not standard features on the slow when you get it. You have to add that aftermarket uh, through your dealership, but uh, I would recommend doing that early and not waiting. Fire extinguisher down below, nice and handy where I need to get to it. The seats, as you can see, they're, they're a good high quality seat. Um, Fairly thick, um, pretty padded. I like this folding step seat. It's not a full bench seat across the top there. It's got three seats um, with the middle bench seat that folds down into a step, and that's kind of nice. As far as storage goes, you know, this is where I keep uh, all my life jackets, my throw cushions. I keep a toolbox over there, extra rope in case I need to tow or get towed, uh, first aid kit. All that stuff sits underneath here and works pretty good for storage, but again, not waterproof. 
So just FYI, if you get, get rain, you're gonna have to take stuff out and dry it out. What you'll notice here is um, for the yellow stick I use to power the video um, when I'm fishing, um, I had to take the original um, rear um, anchor light out uh, and install a new one. I got it after market. Um, I don't know if I got it at Tackle Warehouse or we're off of Amazon or what, but the uh, the original mount for that YOLO stick doesn't have a screw in thread or a deal to lock it in place. And I was always worried about it bouncing out. So basically, I just took that out, got one of these aftermarket deals. It's got the threads in there that you can screw into place um, and anchor your um, YOLO stick in there right here it works okay uh, when I'm on the water but not great but if I need to do some Bluetooth through my phone up here I can Bluetooth to this stereo as well and I can play tunes through my phone if I need to as well um, so that works pretty slick the builds and nav lights again oxygenator recirculation pump and timer that's the main power switch kill switch throttle um, keys already talked about that um, Oh, uh, another neat little feature I've got. It doesn't have a like a cigarette lighter for a power source, but what it does have um, down here where the stereo is um, mounted here behind the boss, I've got an extra USB port right there. And what that's really handy for is if I want to have the camera like this one right here, this GoPro, and I want to run power to it so I'm not constantly eating the batteries, I can plug this in and then plug it in directly to the USB port down here just like so, to where I can constantly have power run into this GoPro and I'm not constantly having to change out batteries. So if I've got somebody fishing in the back that I want to film and I'm up front and I want the camera on them, I can keep constant power to that and film in the back. And then, you know, obviously when I have, I don't have it in here now, but the, the YOLO stick pointed forward, kind of like so, works pretty slick for that. And then I've got the chest mount as well, uh, point of view shots as well but that's a handy little feature for not having a power source there that works good for the for the gopros um, and this just just mounts this is just 3m tape here stuck on the side it seems to hold pretty well in rough water so no complaints yet nice little windscreen there um, nothing fancy but again this thing goes 35 mile an hour top so i'm not in too bad a shape uh tools scissors um, pliers, cutters, my little Rappola kit here. This is just stuck on here. It's I don't have to drill any more holes in there. It seems to be holding just fine. That's super handy for when I need to retie. Um, when I need to retie an FG, I can grab my scissors or what have you, or a sharpen a hook, for example, sharpen a uh, a wacky worm hook. I keep all that stuff handy right there where I can get to it pretty easily. Oh gosh, what else? Of course, promoting the OGT program. Stop poaching. 800-392-1111. You see people out poaching, doing stupid, turn their butts in so we can catch them. Um, rod, uh, the rod holders, I just got those from Bass Pro and mounted those in there. It's fairly easy, straightforward. Um, they don't uh, get in the way, but they do a good job of securing the rods down just fine. Talk about the live well. It's a 23 gallon live well. And again, if it's if I got any complaints about the low, um, just know going into it that the live well is going to need some work. Um, you can see I put these two VT2 vents in here. Um, without them, it was really bad about keeping even crappie or catfish alive. I had a hard time keeping them alive for very long in this thing with just that aerator. Bought these VT2 vents and installed them myself. Um, you got to drill some holes in there to make room for the vents. But that, that lets airflow in and out uh, to where that air can mix with the water and, and help keep that dissolved oxygen content where, the, where it needs to be to help keep your fish alive. So that helps to some degree, but not enough by itself in warm times of the year. Um, obviously, you can see I got the, the sea deck on top. I added, again, more scraps to the bottom to give another layer of insulation to help help do everything I can to keep those fish cooler um, and not get them overheated in this aluminum boat. So one more reason to keep your scraps if you're going to do the uh, sea deck flooring in your boat. It's a 23 gallon live well, and it comes with a divider in here that, that slides out. The divider itself 
Um, it does okay, but I have had fish that have been able to, to work their way over the top of it here. So one, I would definitely not recommend this for a two person tournament. Um, it's only a 23 gallon live well, and you figure about a gallon is about a pound of fish that it can safely hold. So 23 gallon live well, you know, on the rare occasions where I might have a 20 pound bag is about maxed out. It would have a hard time keeping two limits of fish alive. I would not recommend it for that. But for a single person boat, you know, 23 gallon live well is just fine. I mean, I had 17 and a half pounds of grand and, um, you know, uh, it, it seems to work fine um, once I've added some other additions to it as well. I did have, actually dad did this uh, back at Truman last weekend just these little foam floaties deal these pool noodles if you will i had him add that to the top of this divider here so the fish can't get it across I did have dad cut these pool noodles in here kind of a trick we saw from jacob wheeler and some other folks that were uh, putting these pool noodles in here on top one to provide a little bit of cover for the fish underneath it kind of like a big old lily pad but also to keep the water from bouncing too much and the fish from bouncing up into the the tops of the vents or or into the latch handle there to just kind of help protect the fish a little bit as well there's enough space in there between the two where i can still get enough air flow uh, in mixing with the water uh, to keep the dissolved oxygen up where i want it to as well the aerator itself um, it's got the little uh, dial right there i can loosen it up to, to spray more water in the top or tighten it down to slow it down and that's all it comes with when you first get it um, you can see down here Hopefully that shows up. Um, I had Eblins install the oxygenator here a couple weeks ago um, to add fresh oxygen uh, to the water to help with the dissolved oxygen content. In addition, um, I had them add the recirculation pump there. That's the overflow right there. Um, but I had them add the recirculation pump as well. So I've really done everything I can now with this 23 gallon live well to to help um, take care of the fish uh, in the warmer months of the year, but I'm still adding a little bit of ice and G-juice as needed as well. But uh, I did a little bit of testing with it at Truman on that first day on Thursday. I put a couple of my practice keepers in there all day and it worked just fine. So I've got a lot more confidence in this now with these modifications than what I had before. But just some good tips to, to hopefully help you out there if you decide to go this route, um, you know, learn, learn from me and do it right the first time, not have to come back and have it done for you later on. With that, um, gosh, I can't think of anything else off the top of my head. I feel like I'm leaving stuff out, but really, um, let me put this up here. Really, I can't say enough about this boat. I really, really do like it. Um, it's worked just fine for the most part. The only time I really was worried about it was that first Thursday at Truman here a couple weeks ago when those storms came in and that 30 mile an hour wind gust came in there. Um, this boat had a hard time getting back just from smacking against those waves. I mean, it's mostly a flat bottom with a semi-V uh, towards the bow there. Um, and in, in a slight chop or flat water, it works great. But if you're expecting three foot rollers, you're gonna get beat up. It just, it is what it is. There's no one perfect boat for everything. Um, but this is a pretty good all-around boat for, for duck hunting, for gigging, for fishing the rivers, for fishing the lakes. Um, I can pull it with my six-cylinder. Um, really, I, it, and it doesn't cost me an arm and a leg. You know, it's, it's about a third of the price of a full-size boat. And I'm not saying I don't want a full-size fiberglass boat at some point, because I probably will if I get a little bit more serious about this after retirement. But in the meantime, this is doing great. Uh, I'm really happy with the boat. Um, the folks at Eberlins have been good to work with. Um, they got real busy during the pandemic last year and, and a little bit this year, having a hard time getting parts and stuff. But, uh, you know, they've done a good job of outfitting this boat for me or upfitting it rather and uh, really pleased with it. Um, I can't speak highly enough of it. It served me very well this year, my first year fishing tournaments, and it's also good for a family boat as well. So really that's about all I've got for right now, gang. If I think of some more stuff, I'll add it to the video here in a little bit, but uh, just wanted to give you a walkthrough. Again, it's a 2019 low, 1860, uh, 18 foot long, 60, 60 inches wide, side console, rough neck, um, and I uh, absolutely love it. In fact, I'm heading out, uh, I think Chris Kennedy's coming with me tomorrow. We're gonna head to the Osage tomorrow morning on Monday before the, the wreck crowd gets out there, see if we can't stick a few good ones on the Osage River in the morning as well so um, i'm looking forward to that and uh really can't say any more good things about this boat other than just kind of show it off and, and show you what works for me uh, this past year and looking forward to using it again next year as well so 
Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Um, I'll do my best to answer them. Um, I'm sure there's things I'm left, I'm leaving out, but anyway, I'll think of them later and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you all got. So appreciate you all watching and I uh, hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching everybody.